Ahoy there folks! I've been living in Zimbabwe for about six years now, in fact six years exactly this October. A couple of years ago my wife and I, Carrie, sat down and answered a load of questions that folks had asked about what life is like out here, from both my perspective as a, a British expat living out here, um, and to my wife obviously who was born and raised here. Now this is quite an old video, it was originally posted to my mobile gaming channel, so you'll have to forgive the affectation of me wearing a captain's hat, it was part of the shtick that I was doing at that time. But I thought this would be a really great introduction to me doing a series of videos talking about life out here and showcasing what it's like. It's a great place to start. It's a little bit old, it was edited entirely on my phone back in the day, obviously I'm using much more modern equipment now, I've got a much better setup than we had back then, but hopefully it'll give you some insight and heck, if there's a a question that you want to know about life here in Zimbabwe, a topic you'd like to see covered, let me know in the comments. This is the kind of thing I want to be doing a lot more of on this channel. I thought moving that video from that uh, from the old channel onto this one would make a little bit more sense as that's kind of the purpose of this new channel, board gaming, card gaming and my life out here in Zimbabwe. So let me know what you think and I hope you enjoy. Ahoy there, Captain Benzie here coming at you from the Zambezi River here in Zimbabwe. Now, loads of you folks have been asking me all kinds of cool questions about what life is like for me here out in Zimbabwe. Naturally, it is very, very different to the life I'm used to, having been born and raised in the UK. So, I thought it'd be fun that whilst I'm here at Masuna Fishing Camp, my wife are going to sit down and answer some of the questions that you guys have been asking. So, if you do have a question that you don't see answered in this video, please head over to the Catskull Discord, there will be a link in the description down below. Head to the Ask About Zimbabwe channel and pose your question there. Now, there have been tons of these questions. Um, I will edit these videos down to the best of my ability and I aim for them to be about 20 to 30 minutes long each. At that point, we'll then cut and we'll have another video further down. So, if you're interested in this, do stay subscribed to the channel because there's going to be a lot of these little mini videos coming out and I hope you guys really enjoy them because they've been a lot of fun so far for me and my wife to sit here and record and make. So without further ado, let's jump in and answer some questions about what life is like here in Zimbabwe. So first things first, obviously I need to introduce my beautiful wife to you all because she doesn't tend to feature on the camera as much as she does behind it for some of the intros. So Carrie, Please say hi to everyone. Hi everybody. <laughs> so we're going to go through some questions now and just answer them together. I've bought Carrie because obviously she's lived in Zimbabwe a lot longer than I have. And some of these questions, I think it's worth having a bit of an expert's opinion on, I feel. So the first one was from Gex Volpone. I will ask the obvious question first. How many cats are resident at the Zimbabwe Cat Skull Academy? Well, we have two. We've got Chimera, who is our little white calico female, and we've got Moogle, our teeny little tabby terror. Um, both of them like to keep us up at night. Here at Masuna, we take them with us in, on the car journey from Bulawayo to here. So there's a nice six hour long journey with me cramped into the back of our car with the two cats, keeping them safe, getting vomited on, etc. Um, by Chimera, which is great fun. But anyway, <laughs> let's not dwell on that one too much, shall we? BMPT74 asks, so how's the internet there? <laughs> Almost non-existent, to be completely honest. When we were living in Vic uh, Victoria Falls, we had fiber optic internet that cost us a, the equivalent of about 180 US dollars a month um, and was fairly stable. It wasn't bad. Like the only problem we really had is that most video game servers obviously are connected in like Europe or London. Well, I say Europe or London, like London's not Europe. But you know what I mean? Now that we've moved to Bulawayo, the internet is far worse because it's LTE based. We literally have a router that connects via a wire to a massive dish thing on our roof and um, that is basically the equivalent of just a cell phone. It's to the point that I can buy data for my phone um, and that actually works out, works out considerably faster, but not quite as cheap. Um, did we ever find a Chinese restaurant when I did that intro? Yes, 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 yes. Yeah, we went down to Earth Cafe. Yeah, we went and down to Earth Cafe. It's not really a Chinese restaurant, it's more just a restaurant that happened to have Chinese food. Um, which, considering there's a significant Chinese population here in Zimbabwe, a lot of businesses here are operated by uh, Chinese corporations, um, and there are quite a few Chinese nationals that come through. I am astonished, actually, how not... few Chinese shops there are. How, like, there's no Chinese takeaways anywhere. Not really. Um, 
I think we try and stick to our roots as much as we can. Yes, we do have the westernized food and stuff like that, but at the end of the day, um, we try and stick to our roots. So, like, you know, a lot of restaurants will serve, like, um, sadza and meat. One of our friends uh, standing behind the camera has also just pointed out that actually there are quite a few Chinese restaurants, etc., in Harare, as that's where most of them appear to have been set up. Um, so, I need to go to Harare to get Chinese food. Six hour drive. I don't know. Vetamune asks, how are the people there? Like, are they sh social and hang outdoors meeting people such as yourself? Yeah. The common perception is that Zimbabweans are very, very friendly and always wearing a smile and are very sociable. And certainly that's, to a certain degree, very true. But like with any nation, I think there are some people who are very outgoing, some who are a bit more insular. Obviously, I wouldn't be here with my wife if she hadn't been ridiculously friendly and outgoing the day that I met her. Um, that's a story I've told on Patreon, and I will answer if it's a question here, but I'm not going to go into it just at this particular point. But how would you say, like, what are the people like here? Majority friendly, social outdoorsy kind of people? I'd say we are. Most of the time, like, if you go to a nightclub here or something, people will just join your group because they can, because even if you don't know the person from a bar, so you'll get to know them. We, we are friendly people, just in general. It's certainly the case that, like, compared to the UK, where if you try to strike up a conversation with someone at a bus stop, they're going to look at you like you're about to stab them or sell them something, or possibly even both. Here in Zimbabwe, I'll stand in a queue at the shops and just start talking to the guy behind me or the woman at the till and have a full-on conversation. So socialising out and about, yeah, definitely. They're very friendly people. And the other part of that question was, uh, do they hang outdoors meeting people? Yeah, this is a very outdoorsy country. Um, I would suggest personally that the main sort of pastimes are going out, outdoorsy, uh, socialising areas, go have a drink, have a braai, um, which is the proper word for a barbecue, I've been told. Yes, um, please never use barbecue. Barbecue is bad. <laughs> it's a braai. In Africa, it's a braai, not a barbecue. Um, Hot Dog asks, what is the national bird of Zimbabwe? We actually looked this up because it kind of looks like a dove, to be completely honest. It does look like a dove, but it's actually the fish eagle. That's the national bird. No point could I find anything on Wikipedia, etc. that lists a national bird, but the Zimbabwe flag does have a strange bird-like creature on it, which apparently, yeah, is a fish eagle. It looks like a chicken. It looks like a dove tried to draw a chicken. <laughs> Starman92 asks, Coke or Pepsi? <laughs> no endorsement either way. No endorsement either way. Though in fairness, I think ultimately, across Zimbabwe, which would you say? Because there's a lot of Coke here. Majority Coke. Majority Coke, yeah. That you, you see a lot of like tuck shops and small 7-Eleven stores and things like that. Their signs are sponsored by the Coca-Cola company. Um, most of the fruit juices out here are Coca-Cola company. It's Coke this, Coke that. Coca-Cola company is very big. Pepsi is, I would say, close second. Closer than it is in the UK. I think you go into a, a pub in the UK and behind the counter there's a sign there that says, our Coke is Pepsi. Here, no one gives a damn. It's just, you order a, a rum and Coke, it could be rum and Pepsi, it could be rum and Coca-Cola. No one Actually really... Cares. No one cares. As long as there's a liquid inside the rum or the vodka, you, you don't care. <laughs> it's, it's alcohol, come on. Yatsuki asks, would be interesting to hear some locals speak. Do I speak some of their language or do they talk English? Well, I can speak both. Well, one of them. There's two major ones that we have here, which is Shona and Ndevele. I speak Ndevele. So, like, for instance, saying hello, you can say Salibonani. Um, Linjani is how are you? Kanjani um, wena. Or Wuti Kanjan. Because I try to teach him how to say milk, which is kako. It's ka. And he can't. He, he puts an N in it for some reason. I don't know where it comes from. Nako. <laughs> Nako. <laughs> they know what I'm trying to say. Give up. I can't do it. I can't do it. It's a Bantu language, which means it's related to Zulu. Uh, it's got quite a few of the, the Zan clicks. It's not as clicky um, as San. But yeah, it, it, it's, it's a language that's far beyond my comprehension. I did try learning a bit of Shona, like, you know, how to say hello, goodbye, uh, thank you. I think thank you as well is a one there's a lot of different ways to say Tatenda. it. Tatenda. Tatenda, Maitabasa, Masvita, um, Twalumba, Toboja. 
Siobonga. I mean, there's 27 officially recognised separate languages here in Zimbabwe. The main ones, as Carrie said, are English. Almost everyone here speaks English to a certain degree. If you go out to the Ganyin um, <laughs> and find a village out there, most of them will still speak English to a certain extent. Um, if you're after someone like one of the locals to speak, I'll see if I can get something like uh, either my uh, my wife's stepdad um, to say something in Shona or in Debele. Um, and I'll see if perhaps one of the one of the guys, like Austin or something, might be willing to mm. say something. We'll put that on camera well, as well. I can sing an entire song, but I don't. I do believe it could be problematic. Mapuri, so good. <laughs> no, it's going to be stuck in my head. It's going to be stuck in my head. We're not doing that. And Frosty Jack, is there any wildlife just roaming around? Imagines a lion chilling next to Benzie's pool with the local zebras. Now, this is a yes and a no. So, in the middle of Bulawayo. Not so much. You get things like mongoose um, and obviously bird life and things like that, but that's not all that different, I suppose, than in the UK or the States or somewhere, having things like uh, raccoons and foxes. When we were living in Vic Falls, however, yes, um, we would have hyena on our road frequently. We had lion, we had elephant, literally walking past our front gate. We lost our front gate yeah. to an elephant yep. one morning. In fact, the local primary school in Vic Falls had to put a massive wall up because the elephants kept coming and drinking out of the swimming pool there. Well, now, I'll see if I can find some footage of stuff like this. It is, it, it's a very close boundary in certain uh, situations. The big cities like Harare and Bulawayo, not so much, but I mean like here at, uh, here at Masuna, yeah, we've got hippo right behind us in the water here. I'll see if I can find some later. Um, crocodile, very much a threat here. We don't go close to the water. Um, there have been like members of staff here on Masoonra Island who have had run-ins with crocodiles and things like that. So you, you kind of get used to it. Again, not so much in, uh, not so much in Bulawayo. Why have I stayed in Zimbabwe so far? Me! <laughs> Hi. There's a good reason. <laughs> Do Pepsi bottles really fall out of the sky as an opening scene for a quest? Huh? <laughs> they, I, it's a Coke bottle, and uh, no. The gods must be crazy. Well done, you've just caught on. <laughs> Bot grinder four twenty. Thank you for answering this question. That I've, yeah. Okay, so there's a film called The Gods Must Be Crazy, two films called The Gods Must Be Crazy. Um, I would recommend going and looking at it and watching it. It is a comedy. Um, it's set in Africa. And yeah, I won't give too much about it other than I, I thought this was true. hilarious. I thought this was hilarious. And at first I sat there watching it and I, the first thought I had to myself was, if I didn't live here, I would think this is so over the top and unrealistic. The fact that I've lived here, and like, there's a scene in the uh, in the, the first film where the guy is driving, and his car is so difficult to get started, and it's so cranky and old, etc., that basically he gets out of the car whilst it's driving down a hill, runs to the gate, opens the gate, lets the car drive itself through, closes the gate, sprints back up, jumps in the car, and keeps going. Carrie and I have done this. The brake line broke but they still drive it. There's a line I've used numerous times when trying to describe what Africa is like to someone who's lived in a first world country, and it's basically that things that should work don't, like banks, electricity, water companies, this kind of thing. Things that should work don't. The things that shouldn't work, like 50-year-old cars that don't have doors on them anymore and where the seats are literally falling out the back. Heck, Some one of my friends picked me seats. up from work one day and literally he shuts his door and he takes a bit of wire and ties the door closed to the, the frame of the car. No, 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 we do have no, nice cars. We, we, we do nice have cars nice cars. Matt's, just... Matt's quite right. Not all cars are like this. If you've seen uh, the car that uh, Carrie and I drive, that just about holds together. And if you're a government minister, you probably have a very nice, very modern Mercedes. Dranor asks, my favourite local dish. Well, for me, ooh, that's a good question. My favourite local dish. Definitely chamolia. I was about to say, it's going to be chamolia. Um, for those who don't know, chamolia is like a spinach-esque plant. Now I've been doing some research onto Chamolia and apparently it is only in Zimbabwe and Zambia that you really find this. It's often mixed up with like tomato and onion to make kind of a, a pulpy gravy which is amazing. So what would you say the traditional local breakfast is? So traditional local breakfasts would normally be mini meal porridge 
um, which is yeah. made from corn. For instance, if they have like peanut butter, they'll do a peanut butter mini meal porridge, which is actually very delicious. Peanut butter is very popular out here. Very. Love peanut butter. It's so nice. Very. One of my favorite breakfasts, to be completely honest. Very popular, but it's just as likely that if you go to a cafe, for example, you'll find people having a cooked breakfast exactly as you would like in, well, anywhere in Europe. For lunch, this is a question I really struggled with because lunch to me out here is exactly the same as it's always been. Things like sandwiches or pie and chips, whatever kind of fancies. What would you say? So for local dishes, usually we have sadza and a bit of relish, which is uh, some form of vegetables. During lunch times, it'll be either beans of some sort, um, so sugar beans. Mm. You can get those around <laughs> here. There's Kapenta, which is tiny little fish that you find or um, you would get makumbis um, which is a which is a caterpillar it's a mapani worm it is a caterpillar say it's like a caterpillar these are big thick caterpillars um, they're like grubs if you've watched the lion king imagine that kind of size grub that simba eats but it's usually dried it's usually got sort of like a spice on, and a relish on it and that and yeah it's genuinely very nice um, we also have a lot of like flying ants. You take the flying ants, basically you dunk them in water to lose the wings, um, and then you fry them. And again, it tastes just like peanut butter, very popular when fishing. In butter, with salt and pepper, can't go wrong. And no, I'm not trolling anyone on this. That genuinely it's, it's is a genuine a, thing. It, it's like, a genuine it is thing. actually super delicious. It kind of tastes like peanut butter meat deliciousness. Yeah, obviously we've said mealy meal porridge, um, and then sudza. Sudza is, I'm trying to think of what, it, it, across the world it's known as different things. It's known as pup, it's known as grits, as, uh, is it polenta? Yeah. Polenta as well is another word for it. It's basically ground up corn, mealy meal, like corn on the cob, but it's usually a little bit whiter in colour out here. It's ground up into a fine floury like powder mixed with water until it becomes very, very stodgy. It's actually often used as almost like a bread substitute for eating like you you can tear off chunks of this stuff and it's quite spongy in your hand and you use it to scoop up your meat and your vegetables um, from a stew for example and you never ever eat with a knife and fork if you have got sudza on your plate that is just <laughs> sacrilege you eat with your hands that's how it's supposed to be i still eat with a knife and fork and you get shot at it every time is there an America town in a big city and what's it like? I assume this is kind of like a reference to how obviously in London and other, uh, other cities around the world you get things like Chinatown and that kind of thing. Mm. Not really. Um, Bulawayo certainly doesn't. Harare I don't know very well, um, but I'm being told no. How is America perceived? I'm guess guessing, guessing, I'm guessing that mythical BS is an American here. How is America perceived? Um, this depends on who you ask. I'm not going to lie, um, and I'm not going to go too far into this because I don't want to get overly political, but there are certain groups in Zimbabwe that were very, very pro-Trump and his policies and things like that. There were groups that were very against Trump. There are people that are very anti-America because of the whole uh, Zimbabwe being on sanctions and there are groups that are very pro-America but it's very mixed if you speak to most people it's kind of the same the world over that sort of loud um, and sort of very arrogant vibe arrogant's not the word I was going to use <laughs> so I was going to be more polite and say vibrant <laughs> Um, but yeah, there, there's a certain knowledge. I think it's because we get a certain type of American come to Zimbabwe and they tend to be kind of preachy. I know not all Americans like, are like no. that, but we're lucky enough to know a few outside of uh, the country as well. And we know that not all Americans are like that. Yep. Uh, how are the cities built up? Is it more like in Europe, for example, where you have many buildings in one spot? Or is it more spread out so that you have more nature between the houses? This is quite a few questions. We'll ask, answer that bit first, I think. Um, no, it's very much, it's very much like Africa in Europe. We tend to be very built up here in Africa. The suburbs, everything is a plot. It's you don't get a house, you don't get terraced houses, really here like you do in Europe. Um, you just get like plots of land, so it's like squares behind walls, and then there'll be a house in the middle of that, surrounded Usually by garden. 200 meters by 200 meters. Yeah, 200 meters by 200 meters is a fairly common size for a plot. They do get smaller, some are bigger, 
Um, it depends where you go. I mean, if you drive one way out of Bulawayo, you'll see massive plots with beautiful houses, smack bang in the center. So there's not really a front garden and a back garden like I would know it in the UK. It's just house garden. Um, things are very spaced out. People drive long distances here for standard journeys. I'm genuinely terrified to go and visit the UK because of I'm used to nature and the bush and this is my life. This, this is my life. That's what I'm used to. So I'm going to be hugging a lot of trees when I get to the UK. Oh my God, tree, tree, I think, hug. I think my wife, bless her, thinks that uh, if you were to land at Dover and then walk all the way up to Scotland, you're just going to be concrete the whole way. Um, <laughs> I've never I know. left Africa. I know, it's not as, it's not as open as this. How is the infrastructure there? Are all streets made out of asphalt or is it more like a path like we've seen in the beginning of one of your last videos where I got lost while exploring the area around my house? So, both. I, yeah, both. <laughs> If you're driving from Victoria Falls to Bulawayo, that is primarily a tar road. In fact, that's primarily not... Primarily when you're dodging a pothole. I was about to say, it's primarily pothole, but it's meant to be a tar <laughs> road. Once you turn off at Wangi um, to come up towards Masuna, however, um, a lot of that is dirt road for a long stretch. Then there's a bit of tar as you start going through some of the villages, and then it becomes dirt road for the final stretch again. So it's a mix and a match. In, when you're driving around Bulawayo, even that bit where I stopped for that particular video, that's still technically tar there. It's just very dusty tar that's lost a lot of its coloration. As you're inside the cities and connecting the cities, primarily asphalt, um, but as soon as you head out towards the suburbs and as soon as you head off the main roads, um, like the, the more, I suppose you could call them capillary routes, those are much more, um, much more like dirt road. What are the differences that until I lived there, I would have never thought of, uh, asks Kai Allard Lyo. Oh boy, there are so many that I just cannot mention. Obviously I knew that like internet wasn't gonna be as good, that I couldn't get Amazon delivered to my doorstep and stuff like that. Also things like I think just going to a doctor and going to a hospital. Yeah, that's super difficult. For me, when my appendix was about ready to burst a couple of years back and we drove up to Bulawayo um, from Victoria Falls to get that sorted, I couldn't be admitted to hospital until the payment had been cleared. So there's me sitting outside being told by my doctor, look, your appendix is due to burst any second now, we need to get you into surgery. I ha we had to actually go and find our own surgeon. You don't just turn up to the hospital no. and they take you in and off you go. We actually had to go to the hospital and book into the hospital. We had to find a surgeon, contact him and pay him separately. He would then come to the hospital, do the surgery and think there's a lack of centralization that I wasn't expecting. On the other hand, though, there are a lot of like more positive things that like are differences that I wouldn't have considered until I moved here. Like the fact that if you break down on the side of the road, people will just stop and say, are you OK? Do you need help? Our nephew recently ran out of fuel um, and a guy literally stopped his car, got out and said, look, what's the problem? And he explained that, you know, look, my car has run out of fuel. The guy got back into his car, drove off to a petrol station with a jerry can, filled it up came back, filled up our nephew's car, gave him his phone number and said, just pay me back when you can. And I cannot think of anywhere else where that would be ever a thing, let alone, I'm not gonna say frequently, but it's not rare enough that people are just like, you know, oh my God, what? It's, it's fairly, it's not expected, but it's not surprising uh -uh. when someone does something like that out here. On Friday, we had to actually race off to go and get said nephew from his work because he had a bad allergic reaction. I only had a big note on me. I walked into the pharmacy. I said, I'm so sorry, I don't have change. I'll collect later. They said, don't worry about it. Come back and give us the money, you know, kind of thing. And because we've got such a tight knit community, even if you don't know the person, you know you're, going, you're genuinely going to get those things back. And that actually comes to another uh, difference that I hadn't considered, and that's currency. When I moved out here, the US dollar was king. It was everywhere. You could go up to an, uh, to an ATM, put your card in, and it would spit out US dollars. I could walk into a bank and get US dollars. It was about a year after I moved here that the, uh, the bond note was introduced, and since then, I, I've had to learn how to pay in US dollars, receive change in bond notes, rands, and even Pula occasionally. So you just, you kind of get used to having to have three, possibly even four or five different currencies available. You're really good at math. Yeah, it, it's <laughs> insane. 
understanding currency conversion rates to the point it's it's like living on the border of five different countries and all of the different currencies are accepted and you may get change back in any of them if you're lucky to get change at all you may just be told yeah pick some sweets from the counter and that will make up the rest of the difference or a pin their favorite is a pin dark wolf 2244 do i identify as zimbabwean if someone asked me what my nat uh, nationality was would i call myself zimbabwean now completely honestly no but i don't think i could ever truly call myself zimbabwean i think that would possibly even be insulting to the folks who live here to say i'm zimbabwean i still have to pay for the privilege of living here um for another couple of years until i get my uh, my permanent residency visa rather than currently i'm just living here on a spousal visa i am zimbabwean carrie very much identifies as zimbabwean because she was born here her mother and her father were born here. Her grandparents were born here. Her great-grandparents were all born here. Um, so she is Zimbabwean through and through. I, on the other hand, I was born and raised in England. So I am English. I'm British. Um, but I live in Zimbabwe and I identify as a British Zimbabwean, if that's a thing, I suppose, is how I would say. Lou asks, I would be curious to know as what kind of views there are in regards to photography aside from animals, like scenery beyond what I've shown before in the past. So I'm going to see if I can put some photos on screen now of just what the scenery out here can be like, not necessarily looking at animals. Um, I'll just put up things like some of the national parks, um, some of the views here from Masuna, and just an idea to give you an idea, just, just a couple of examples to give you an idea of what the topography here is like. Um, Nibs Scar asks, what are the cultural oddities I encountered and which ones I start to take on? Ooh, um, I think speech is a big one. Um, certainly, as we mentioned earlier, there are 27 local languages in Zimbabwe, and you'll find that most people speak bits and pieces of multiple of them. Obviously, um, Afrikaans is fairly well spoken here as well, though not native to Zimbabwe per se. Um, obviously, a lot of Southern Africans not South Africans, a lot of people living in Southern Africa, so South Africa, Namibia, Botswana, Zambia, Zimbabwe, even Mozambique, will still speak Afrikaans. It means that just colloquial conversation, you tend to throw words out there, and I've caught myself doing this numerous times um, in the past, so I'm certainly picking up on that. Even just ones that are just sort of idiosyncratic sayings, like in it's joked that in Africa you have, oh yeah, I'll be there, I'll be there now. I'll be there just now. I'll be there now now. I'll be there, you know. Mm. Later. These all have completely different meanings. Yes. I'll allow my wife to explain. So, I'll be there now means... It means I'll be there now. I'm on my way. I'll be there now now. Meaning, give me about an hour. I'll be there just now. Yeah, you're probably not going to see me. <laughs> Zimbabweans take those words from, from Ndebele, from Shona, and they just throw those into casual speak in a way that I've never heard before. Yep. Out here? I mean, it's how many common. times? I actually had to, the one question that you asked me earlier, well, that was asked earlier, what food do we eat? And it took me a little bit of brain power not to say sadza and nyama, because nyama is meat. And genuinely, that, that's, that's what we refer to. That's genuinely what I say. I say sadza and nyama. Did you bring, did you bring nyama with you to braai? Would be one of the common sayings. There was one you picked me out on, which was when I said, you said your stomach was sore, and I was like, oh, your tumbus must be tumbus. tangled up. It's basically, tumbus means stomach. Until he actually started asking me the questions, I didn't realize how much we do it until somebody asks you what you're saying. It's, it's very different. It's just as common for me to say to someone, use your head, as it is for Carrie to say, Use your nondos. There we are. I can't do the click, so use your nondos. Nondos. Use your, your brains. Lose, use your brains. Anyway, that does bring us to the end of this particular video. So thank you, Carrie, for joining us here for this one. Not a problem. Um, I know you guys have been eagerly anticipating this for a while. We got so many questions that I am going to have to split it up into a couple of different videos. Um, so if you, if there's a question you asked and hasn't been shown, for example, um, do stand by. We'll, we will there. We will be back with a part two very soon. If you've got other questions, do head over to the Catskull Discord. Make sure you ask in the Ask About Zimbabwe channel, and I'll keep making these as long as you guys keep asking, vid uh, asking questions.